from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome to a special presentation of the Cube and Amazon Web Services reInvent 2016 preview. Happy to welcome to the program a first-time guest, Joe Kinsella, who is the founder and CTO of Cloud Health Technologies based locally here in Boston, Massachusetts. Joe, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me here. All right, we always love when we get to get the founders on, Joe. Uh, you know, work in the cloud space, uh, you've been in tech uh, for a lot of years. Give our audience a little bit about your background and what led to uh, starting Cloud Health. Sure, so I've spent, um, I spent the majority of my career actually building software that manages infrastructure and applications, so it's not a big stretch to think that I would go start a cloud management company. Uh, but I started Cloud Health in 2012 um, uh, at the time. Uh, the cloud was still um, uh, still emerging, and th it wasn't clear that there was going to be such a dominance of Amazon and, and public cloud. And um, I just saw a complexity problem evolving that I think I'd seen a couple times before in my career, where just the complexity of managing applications and infrastructures and services in the cloud was outpacing our ability to contain it. So I set out to build a company around that, and that was um, it's a little over four years ago. Yeah, Joe, speak to that complexity issue because people, you know, cloud, wait, it's simple, I swipe a credit card, it's, you know, easy to, you know, consume uh, y and do that, so what specifically are the complexity issues that, that Cloud Health's uh, helping to tackle? Yeah, so I think you step back and you look, the, the great power of the cl cloud comes with one great cost, and that is complexity, which is, um, you know, the, the uh, amount of uh, effort you can put into actually securing or driving cost efficiencies or driving, you know, performance in a Availability across your cloud infrastructure, it's it's gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of expressiveness, and you can do fantastic things. But it comes with that cost of complexity and just managing it as you scale it. So, um, I mean, I personally confronted this, which is in the 2011 timeframe. I built out a, um, a distributed system that was across multiple public clouds that was uh, thousands of cores of compute, uh, petabytes of storage, and and when you do that, you start to realize that the cloud is a disruptive innovation, but it needs to be harnessed and it needs to be controlled and it needs to be governed. And so what I set out to do with Cloud Health was to build an open management platform that uh, that integrates with the tools that you use. So these could be from any number of vendors, from you know Chef and Ansible and uh, New Relic and Datadog and Alert Logic, and uh, be able to uh, harness what they do in a single pane of glass where you can actually drive Really, I, I, I distill it down to three core value propositions. Integrated reporting, integrated recommendations, and then active policy management where you can drive unified governance. Okay, Joe, can you give us some of the speeds and feeds of the company itself? How many employees you have? How many products? How many customers? Sure, so um, so in terms of uh, customers, we're um, uh, just under 700 customers. Um, uh, so it's been really rapid growth. I think just by pure um, uh, KPIs, we're actually one of the fastest growing SaaS companies in Northeastern United States. Um, uh, it's been a bit of a rocket ship in terms of the growth. The company's at um, just under 140 people right now. And, um, uh, and we've, we've done all that. I mean, if you look, we've been pretty much doubling uh, uh, both uh, um, uh, in customer count as well as uh, in, um, uh, in employee count over the last uh, several years. And then, you know, last year alone, we did over 400% growth from a revenue perspective. Congratulations, and uh, wh what situation is the funding? Oh yeah, so we are a um, uh, venture back startup. So we've raised uh, three rounds of uh, funding. So we raised an A, B, and a C, both from East and West Coast. So we have some Boston-based investors as well as um, Silicon Valley-based investors. And uh, total funding in is 40 million over three rounds. Okay, great. And uh, you mentioned uh, so some of the services that you, that you uh, work with, you know, Chef, Puppet, Ansible. How about from a cloud standpoint? Obviously, we're, we're talking about Amazon, sure. but uh, what other, you know, what solutions do you plug into? Sure, so we're a hybrid, hybrid cloud solution. So we actually support, um, we effectively have four products in the market today. So we have an Amazon product that's um, market leading, very rich product. You should see it on the show floor. Um, uh, we have an Azure product, we have a Google product, we also have a data center product that actually uh, supports private clouds and supports physical infrastructure inside your data center. Okay, and, and the scope of that private cloud piece, is it, you know, regardless of, you know, who's, you know, storage compute network? Uh, it is, yeah, piece? it's completely agnostic of uh, what the underlying infrastructure is. Okay, and it's four different products, do, do you have a hybrid option or a, how does that fit together? It all fits into a single pane of glass. So you could actually start with us with just using our Amazon product, which is really, a, that, that tends to be the most common pattern across our customers is our customers start with Amazon and then they say, you know what, this, this, uh, the insight, the value, the governance, the uh, reporting, you know, what I'm getting, I need that same 
um, uh, efficiency back in my data center, can I have that too? And so typically that results in them turning on the product. Often the, the path back into the data center goes through migration. Uh, one of the things our product does is it makes great migration recommendations, which is um, you turn on our product, we actually um, discover your infrastructure, and we understand the workloads, and we can assess how to cost effectively, uh, what and how to cost effectively move infrastructure into the cloud. Great, and Joe, uh, to speak a little bit to the, the use case, is there kind of a, you know, a low watermark that customers need to hit before they're ready for your technology? What, what kind of leads them uh, to start using you? It's a good question. It's, it's all about complexity, which is, um, th that complexity that we kind of opened with, once that complexity feels like it's starting to get out of control, and for us we start to see it, y you see it based on the amount you spend in the cloud, which is when you are when you start doing dev and test in the cloud and you have really small number of workloads and, and fairly low complexity, you don't need cloud health. Um, and uh, you can pretty much get away with whatever vendor's tools you're working with and, and that's sufficient. It's as you start to grow, you start to uh, confront that complexity and you need some centralized way to actually manage it. And that's, that's where Cloud Health steps in. If you look at the you know, top 50 companies that are um, pushing the bounds in the cloud today, you know, my guess is the vast majority of them are actually Cloud Health users. Great, um, so d what's it like living in kind of the Amazon ecosystem? <coughs> are you guys in the marketplace? Uh, is there any kind of partnership with them? How much does Amazon kind of in, impinge on uh, the, some of the services that you're offering? Sure, so um, so Amazon's been a great partner. I mean, they've really helped fuel the growth over the last four years. Um, uh, we've been uh, very happy to, to work with them. We work on them on multiple levels from, uh, we work with the product managers. We, uh, you know, one of the keys to being in the middle of this nexus of what's happening in the cloud is, and I, I say this to, um, um, to everybody I meet at Amazon, which is the key for us is not that Amazon might not n infringe or uh, displace some feature that, I that, that we might, might come out with. It's the key is for us is to always make sure we're complementing, complementing and ex extending what they're doing and what other partners that we work with are doing. And that's the key to our business, which is uh, once you bring together eight or 10 different products to go manage your cloud and you have you know, hybrid cloud infrastructure, you have one or more public clouds, the complexity there is uh, great enough to justify you know, a really strong product to help solve that. The key is to understand where the opportunities are and make sure you're driving real customer value. All right, so, so Joe, it's going to be my fourth year going to Amazon reInvent. Uh, really excited. We're going to have the Cube there for the fourth year. Have to say, it is you know by far the most impressive show that I go to year after year. Just the growth of uh, just the size of the show. It's affected over twenty five thousand people this year. Uh, the <coughs> you know how many releases you know Amazon always has uh, you know some great customers and new announcements at, at the keynote uh, and just you know that whole ecosystem of you know partners, customers, and everything. Uh, it's just you know amazing to watch. Uh, wh what are you looking at for the show this year? Uh, any kind of themes or you know key things that you're excited about? I, I always look forward to the themes at reInvent. So, um, so and I've been going for four years as well. So I think, um, I think there's several themes that I'm kind of expecting to see a lot around. So one is serverless. Uh, you know, I don't know if you're kind of plugged into what's happening Yeah, so, so, so for audience <coughs> that haven't heard, it's the AWS Lambda feature. Uh, sometimes uh, people uh, struggle with that serverless term. Uh, I've heard functions as a service is a, another alternative, uh, or uh, you know, we can call it, I think, Fred or Jim, uh, <laughs> if you don't like that. Uh, uh, Brian Gracely, uh, uh, who does the Cloudcast podcast, they're, they're launching a serverless podcast. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. I'm not sure how much of our audience is familiar with it. But sure, yeah. Maybe, yeah. How, why is serverless exciting? I mean, you? I mean, uh, I think part of it is um, anytime there's a disruptive innovation, there's te there's this tendency to actually use it like the predecessor uh, technology. So you look like uh, when we had digital cameras, the original dig digital cameras came in a box and looked suspiciously like film-based cameras, and and uh, today that isn't how you engage with digital photography, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the same has been happening with the cloud, which is today um, uh, we're starting to see the glimpse of what the cloud could become, which is. I think um, uh, much of the cloud over the last several years has been better virtualization, uh, consumption-based on-demand, third-party managed better virtualization. But but things like uh, serverless and a lot of the platform services that Amazon has been innovating on, I think that's the future of the cloud. That's where the disruption is fully realized. And so I would be surprised if there's not some big announcements around that. So that's just one of several things. I I think. And Joe, specifically, uh, if I'm reading into what you're saying correctly, it's that potential to really change the way I, I, I build and create applications, right? Exactly, okay. yeah. Which has tended to be, I mean, it's the long pole in the tent. Uh, you've heard you know, a lot of discussion about, you know, do we just lift and shift to the cloud? Uh, VMware 
on AWS. You know, is that an okay way to go? And any 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 feedback on your end on uh, that type of solution, which is coming next year? Um, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I, I I found that partnership really interesting. It'll be um, it's hard to say where it's actually going to go. Um, you know, I think one of the uh, likely scenarios is, I mean, the truth is, is that most companies are uh, have VMware are already doing something in the cloud, so it makes great sense for VMware to actually have a play in Amazon that actually makes good business sense for them. Um, but I do think the future of infrastructure is um, not going to have servers involved in it, and it's um, not going to have virtualized servers involved in it. And you know that may be the ten-year future or the five-year future. I, I, and just to clarify, when you say there won't be servers, it's that the application won't have to worry about that at the back end somewhere. You know, there, there's compute that it lives on. Yeah, sadly that's yeah, still yeah, true. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think it, the it was like cloud, you know, uh, the, the old uh, Larry Ellison, you know, cloud's nothing but water vapor. It's like, <laughs> no, it all lives on hardware eventually. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, absolutely. No, I, no the consumer will, um, it'll be an abstraction to yeah. the consumer at some point in time. So that, I find that exciting. I think um, enterprise, I, I would expect another big push around enterprise. I, I felt like, um, Two years ago, I felt like the theme was the enterprise is coming. Last year, I felt like the theme was the enterprise is here. Um, I, I feel like there's been this shift where I think most cloud providers were expecting the enterprise to come to the cloud, and I think that's happened, but I think um, there's a shift to realizing that the cloud has to come to the enterprise now. And so I think I, I would expect you're going to see a number of things around that, and I think you can already see some of the announcements around some of the migration services that have come out over the course of this year, and some that are in preview and beta. Um, gives a glimpse of the fact that you know Amazon realizes that the vast majority of infrastructure still does not reside in Amazon, and reducing that friction, reaching out and embracing uh, complex hybrid cloud uh, deployments is going to be key to their long long term success. Okay, uh, Joe, <coughs> give us a little bit of insight. Uh, you know, any announcements coming from Cloud Health, or what, what can we expect to see from uh, your, your company at the show? Sure. Yeah. So, um, so y if you've been following us, there's a number of announcements we've done around security, which is um, you know, so so key to Cloud Health is is we seek to complement and extend the products that matter to our customers. And our customers use a, a wide variety of different products um, from a security perspective. And so we don't seek to displace those products, but we there's a piece of security around just configuration monitoring that is um, just our customers are struggling with and fits right into the unified governance that Cloud Health drives. So, so what we did is we um, uh, we launched a uh, new feature in our platform. It comes just as part of the base platform. You don't have to pay extra for it. And uh, what it does is it does um, active uh, governance across your uh, security of your infrastructure. It applies best practice rules. We're also including third-party benchmarks like um, uh, Center for Internet Security so that you can actually very get quick time to value and understand how well are you complying with uh, third-party standards. Um, it's just a great way uh, to actually understand the health of the security or infrastructure. Another announcement we're making is just around hybrid cloud, which is the single pane of glass, um, the ability to have a single dashboard where you see all of your infrastructure across all of your uh, public and private clouds is just um, surprisingly powerful today, which is it's a, it's a struggle for uh, CIO, uh, CIOs and enterprises today to really get a handle on that. And when they, they, they've had cloud health for the public cloud, there's been a natural um, gravitation to say, you know, well, why can't I have that for my on-premise infrastructure? Uh, so that's another big announcement. We're also announcing um, our uh, ADS support, uh, application discovery service from Amazon. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see, you know, Amazon <coughs> for the last couple of years has talked about, you know, customers being all in on Amazon. When we talk to customers, it's a multi-cloud world, and even, you know, tend to look more from an application standpoint and, you know, say, okay, you talk to a customer, I'm all in on Amazon. It's like, are you v using Microsoft, you know, Office 365? Of course you are. are you using Salesforce? Of course you are. are. you using SAP and Oracle? Yeah, I'm probably using some of those too. And, you know, where do those, those li all live? Well, some of them on Amazon, but many of them, you know, right. not in that environment. And how do I get my arms around, you know, managing and, you know, orchestrating all of the various pieces and where does my data live? My data lives lots of different places and you know getting access to that is, is really challenging. Yes, it's <laughs> a um, it's a crazy world we've unleashed which is it's uh, it's very complex, it's very hybrid, it's it's multi-vendor, it's heterogeneous and um, and and with that comes complexity and I think you know that is the whole mission. My mission in life is to ju just collapse that complexity of managing disparate services, disparate vendors, disparate uh, data that might reside in multiple locations. Yeah, yeah Joe, I mean, th think back to the data center world. The, 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 the problem that we had in you know, IT, it was I, I would have all these various pieces and therefore managing you know, each one of those temples that I created for all my applications was a bit of a mess. 
Um, I thought cloud was supposed to give us homogeneity, uh, yeah. but as, as you pointed out, we, we've got a lot of complexity because you know lots of different services across multiple different platforms, and uh, you know we need solutions to help us pull those together. Sounds like that's one of the things you're tackling. Right? It is, yeah, 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 and I think that th that's uh, that's essential to our customers. A, a last thing just to hit on is is uh, right sizing. Is uh, is uh, we have a series of features that we've uh, we're announcing and have announced around right sizing, and that's just the constant optimization, which is one of the things we do that's really unique is um, we're trying to automate your uh, your business processes. So instead of you managing at a low level, like uh, the, the cloud embraced um, automation at a configuration management and provisioning level very early, uh, but it hasn't at a business automation level where you want to say, here's the economics I need to manage that, 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 that application to, here's the security I need it managed to, here's the usage, the performance, the availability, and then enabling software to actually automatically drive that efficiency. Um, what we do with our uh, with Cloud Health is we actually have a policy engine that has integrated in, into it um, business automation with the ability to actually go drive changes back to your cloud. Um, so you can think of it as just this uh, constant optimization engine that's looking for opportunities to actually make you more secure or more cost effective or more performant. All right, so Joe, la last thing I want to get into <coughs> is, you know, you talked to a lot of customers. Where's their mindset at? How do they think about cloud? You know, do they really have, you know, a, a clear strategy yet and, and you know, ones that are looking at Amazon, you know, wh what's their mindset at? Yeah, so our, our m almost all of our customers, um, uh, you know, a large portion of our customers are very passionate about Amazon. And um, many of them you'll actually see here in, uh, in reInvent. So, so what we, when we uh, look at uh, what our customers are saying, one of the biggest problems they're confronting right now is just governance, which is the model of the cloud. The cloud came kind of bottoms up. It came from line of business inward to central IT. And so the struggle is, is that you have infrastructure that's no longer being centrally managed like the infrastructure of 10 years ago. Uh, you have applications no longer being centrally managed, but yet you uh, reside in an enterprise where that centralized governance is absolutely essential to what you do. So, so um, we see customers struggling with adopting a new model where they can have centralized governance and distributed management. And, uh, and there's, I think there's a missing process model. In the same way that DevOps kind of came on the scene and helped us bridge the gap between, you know, the impedance mismatch between operations and engineering, uh, the same thing needs to happen across just governance, across line of business and central IT. So that's one of the challenges we see. Uh, security is, uh, you know, a constant ongoing. I mean, uh, four or five years ago, uh, security was the concern for why you wouldn't move to the cloud. Now, everyone's moved beyond that. Now it's just how do I keep up with it? How do I do it better? And in many cases, customers are actually more secure when they actually move their infrastructure into a public cloud like Amazon. And uh, that results from the ability to actually take advantage of all these different underlying components that allow them to put controls in place that were harder to do inside their data center. So that's a, a, a common theme we see. And then just overall governance, just uh, you know, being able to automate that governance and being able to drive change without having to put human beings in the middle of it is another common theme we see. Yeah, just uh, on the security point, we, we definitely found uh, it, it used to be a little bit of barriers like, oh wait, security and cloud, something yeah. you need to worry about. Um, what people found is once they engage, it's an opportunity to at least restart that discussion on security because if you hadn't changed your security processes in a while, you're really out of date. Yes. And my friends that are in the security industry is the thing you can do the most is be up to date. <laughs> and yeah. the, the, you know, uh, when I'm using Amazon, uh, you know, hey, what version of AWS are you using? It, it's a <laughs> joke, right? Because you're on the latest version, and therefore they can make sure to patch and 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 fix everything. Um, you mentioned governance. I'm, I'm curious, the customers you talk to, just do global events concern people uh, ar around governance? I think about you know Brexit over in the UK, uh, political situation here in the US. Uh, you know Amazon, you know US based, but you know very much a global fo footprint today. It, it, it does. I think um, you know I think one of the things cloud providers and especially Amazon has done well is they've put regions in all the places that matter, which gives data locality. So it gives the ability, just like the expressiveness of the security features that are available from Amazon allow you to actually uh, do certain things that make you more secure in the data center, you actually have that same expressiveness from a data locality perspective. So I think when it comes down to the mobility of data and being able to uh, have data uh, reside where it, uh, you know, in country or in region, there's the ability to do that now today. And that wasn't possible just a few years ago. Um, so I think I think there's a concern there, but there's also a lot of building blocks to actually deal with uh, gov different types of compliance that exists out there. 
different types of governmental regulations that exist out there. And then even within a um, enterprise, just being able to deal with your own uh, you know, policies and best practices around how to manage applications and infrastructure. All right, Joe, I want to give you the last word. Uh, you, you've been watching cloud since the early days. What excites you about today? Uh, you know, what, what are the, just kind of the, the things that going forward are going to be able to help companies you know, grow more, improve their businesses? Yeah, I feel like uh, a lot of people feel like the cloud is much further along than it actually is, which is I think we're on the cusp of the, um, th the next interesting part of the cloud, which is to me this is where the transformation really begins. This is, um, you know, if you go back and uh, equate it to the dot-com boom, to me I feel like we're entering 1996 of the dot-com boom, which is uh, there's enough building blocks, there's enough expressiveness, there's the, the opportunity to really innovate and um, is, is really there. So I expect people are going to start to construct um, different types of applications that not only um, leverage the cloud, but would not be possible without the cloud. And I think once that happens, I think you're going to start to see a transformation and almost like a flywheel acceleration that will force businesses that really weren't innovating all along to actually play catch up to their peers that, that took the chance early in the cloud and drove that innovation. So, so I think we're in an exciting time. I think it's, um, you know, this market's moved faster than any market I have ever been in. And I'm um, just looking forward to the next few years of seeing how it plays out. Uh, absolutely, we sometimes use the, the sports analogy. Um, you know, if we have moved on in innings, uh, it's probably a doubleheader. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, lots of innovation uh, left to go uh, in the cloud space. Uh, Joe, really appreciate you coming. Help us give a preview for AWS 2016. Uh, be sure to check out Cloud Health's booth at Amazon reInvent and check out SiliconAngle.tv for all the coverage there, including our coverage of AWS reInvent 2016. Thanks so much. You've been watching theCUBE.